Today we're going to be doing a negative painting in watercolor. We'll talk about what it is and how to do it in today's tutorial. You are going to need some type of blues for your paints. I only used like two blues on this and then for the snow I used some white gouache but in the tutorial I also um, mentioned there is you could use like a white gel pen to do the little snow on top at the very end or you don't even have to put snow you'll see as we do the tutorial how it looks before the snow maybe you don't want it on um, but that's tools today and then brushes I am using uh, eight round Princeton aqua light and then I also am using this brush which is um, Artegra Intuition Quill size 2. So this kind of holds a lot of water which is nice because as we're painting in this snowy scene uh, you kind of need to be able to work quickly. So I like using this guy because it can hold a lot of water and cover just a little bit more area than what this one can. So those are the two brushes. Some tape to tape off your painting. Paper towels, water. Oh and we're bringing back the cap. You need that again. So a water bottle cap or something small and round to trace. Other than that, let's dive into this painting. All right, so for our negative painting today, first thing we need to do is tape our border for this one. So I just have my artist tape. Um, I get this stuff off of Amazon and it usually does the trick. Mm. I would say nine times out of 10. Every now and then it'll, it'll kind of leak on me and I'll get some bad edging, but usually, usually it works pretty good. And I'm just gonna press my paint, uh, my tape down real fast, so that's good. Okay. Let's draw the scene in first and then we'll talk about how to do the negative painting. And we'll, we'll look, kind of work through the whole thing um, as we go so it'll make sense. So I'm kind of just doing like a, a snowy kind of hill right now. And I'm gonna draw these trees in the front are gonna be slightly taller because they're closer up to us. And I'm really just kind of doing um, a couple groupings of trees here. And then we're gonna do, we're gonna keep repeating the same process. Put a few trees right here, slightly, maybe a little bit smaller. Maybe I'll do a third one right here. Okay, and then we're gonna do some more back in here. And these guys are definitely getting smaller. Lots of fun little snow hills. And then I'm gonna do one final one back here. Okay, so I've got my tree shapes. I'm actually gonna, this one kind of bugged me. So I'm gonna erase that. I'm gonna go medium height, then a tall one, and then a shorter one, kind of back in there. Okay, and one last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do the moon kind of setting on this because this is gonna be a night scene. Um, so we're gonna take our trusty cap. <laughs> we used a water, ca uh, water bottle cap last time and we're actually gonna use it again. And I'm only gonna trace about half of it because the moon's kind of behind this last final hill that we have. All right, my trusty trusty water bottle cap is good now. Now we're ready to start doing the negative painting. So I'm gonna kind of use just some blues for this. So um, I'm using uh, the Derwent Intense palette again. And I'm gonna kind of stick to, the blue is, they name their, their colors differently, but it's kind of like a cobalt blue. And I'm gonna use a little bit of the blue next to it, which is kind of like an indigo slash um, Persian type blue. So I'm just mixing some blues together for this. Feel free to use whatever, whatever blues you have. And what we're gonna do first is, because this is a negative painting, we're not going to paint the actual trees. 
We're gonna put a wash down and then we're gonna be painting around the trees each layer. So instead of painting inside, we're gonna be painting around and you'll see as we go, cause that sounds a little bit confusing, but negative painting is painting the negative space and not painting the positive space, which would be the trees. The trees is the positive space. So for this first layer, we are going to grab our paint brushes and get ready to go. Okay, so for my first mixture, I am going to keep it lighter. Um, and I'm just kind of using mostly kind of like this cobalt blue color. And I'm not erasing my pencil lines on this because this is actually gonna get pretty dark as we continue to layer on it. So I'm keeping it, uh, it's gonna stay lighter in value. I would use a bigger brush, um, some type of a mop brush. I'm not worried about that. That's just gonna blend right in. All right, here we go. First wash coming in. I'm getting this first layer down. I could even probably use a bigger brush than this, but oh well, this will be okay. The bigger the brush, the easier it is just to fill in. And the less marks you kind of have too. Okay, so our first pass is done on this. Now that first pass, we just paint everything in. And the next pass is gonna be where we start to paint the negative shapes around. So we have to let this dry. I'm gonna use my um, trusty little craft heat gun that I got off of Amazon and take the drying time down a lot faster. If you have a blow dryer, that works as well. This whole painting today is gonna be a lot of painting most of the paper and layering. So it is gonna be a lot of getting it really wet and then trying to dry it and then getting it wet and drying it. And so if you want this painting to not take forever, I probably would use some type of um, blow dryer to heat it so that can go quicker. So I usually try and check it with the back of my hand so I don't get oils on it because um, the front of your fingers have a lot more oils. I'm also gonna add, I think, a little tree to this one. Yeah, I felt like it needed, I don't know. Yeah, we'll keep it. <laughs> okay, um, I'm just kind of going over some of these shapes real fast. Okay, once this is dry, make sure it's completely dry, not even like 80% or this next layer isn't gonna work. Same with each layer we do, make sure every time it's 100% dry before you move on. I'm probably even gonna throw the blow dryer on it one more time just to make sure it's good before we do this next layer. That's also why I have my, not only my border tape, but I've taped my paper to the table to help because we are gonna be drying this so much to help with the warping and the bowing of the paper. Keeping it taped down to your surface will help a lot with that. Okay, we're ready for the next layer. So this layer, this is where we're gonna actually start doing the negative painting part. We are gonna leave this hill, these trees in the front, so these five trees and the moon, the color it already is. So what that means is we're gonna paint around all of these shapes and we're not gonna paint into those. And so by painting around them, we're painting the negative space. So I'm going to grab my brush again get my blue, I might add a little bit of this darker blue. And so now we're gonna come in with a second layer. And again, we have a, quite a few layers. So again, don't get too dark yet. We, we, still, um, we still want this to be pretty light in value because it's only our second, our second pass. Okay, so I'm gonna come in. I don't have to be careful until I get to right here. Now I have to start painting around my tree. And again, we're gonna paint around the moon, but I want those trees painted in. So I guess just this little tiny spot is gonna be positive painting, the trees inside the moon, because we did paint those in. So this isn't, 100% a negative painting. It's 98% a negative painting. I didn't think about that when I put those little trees in there. So 
technically we didn't paint technically that we painted the positive and not the negative but i think it's gonna look really cool to have those trees inside the moon so that's okay we're only at a 99 percent negative painting Okay, so by painting around the moon and these foreground trees, you can see that the, the shape popped out now, which is really cool that we didn't have to do anything except just paint around them and that popped them out. And we're gonna repeat this process each time we go back with these hills and trees and we're gonna get just slightly darker each time. So now that that's painted in, I can come back with the blow dryer, blow dry it, repeat this process. All right, we're gonna come back and grab a little bit more paint, getting slightly darker this time. This time, what I'm gonna do is make sure not to paint this hill and one, two, three, four, five, six trees. These trees now are not gonna get painted in. Also make sure you still go around everything else we went around last time. So the moon, these trees in the foreground, all that still needs to not be painted on. Oops, I went a little bit down into this um, hill. So take a brush and just grab that off. Make sure there's no paint on your brush, just a little bit of water, and kind of take that off. Oh, and I painted this tree. <laughs> so, this is a great way to see what to do if you accidentally mess up. Grab your brush, pull some of that off, and then dab it on your paper towel. There we go. This, that's the hard part of negative painting, is um, sometimes you, you're so lost in like painting everything, you forget what to paint and what not to paint. Okay, that layer's good, so now we can come back and dry it. Okay, that's dry, so same thing. Coming back, getting another layer, getting a little more paint, getting a little bit darker. I think by the time I get to those back, the final layers, I might add a little bit of purple into my mix, but right now still I'm sticking with, with blue. My blues, really just using two blues. Okay, so this next spot, we're keeping this hill. We've got one, two, three, four trees that we're saving. And then the moon as well. Yeah, I try and like point it out before I start painting, just so that I'm telling my mind like what to do before I even start doing it to try and help with painting the areas I should. So in that regard, negative painting can be a little tricky. But you saw how it wasn't too hard to just um, remove if you accidentally paint. This is kind of a fun one because each layer, it just, you can see um, the depth kind of being created each time, which is fun. And you can see how dark we're starting to get. Okay, that looks good for that layer. Gonna blow dry it. Okay, once that's dry, we've got our final layer. So I'm actually gonna switch brushes to um, my Princeton 8 Round Aqua Light. I feel like I can get a little bit more detailed around these trees just for this final layer because it's getting less and less area that I have to fill in. So I feel better using this brush. I'm gonna add a little bit of like a magenta almost into this final color. And again, this is now our darkest color. So this time, feel free to go as dark as what you want. You don't have to hold back because this is it. Final, final layer. All right. That's a nice kind of purpley 
color. So I'm painting again around the trees. And this layer, because it's your final layer too, feel free, like if you feel like you need to go darker with it, you can. Like by doing another pass, you could let this dry. If you felt like, oh, I didn't go dark enough with it. Um, you could always do that too. It's crazy because by the time you get to this final layer, it looks like the moon is like the white of the paper, but you and I know it's not the white of the paper because we started this out with that like bluish color that was kind of lighter, but we didn't feel like it was that light, right? So it's just, it's crazy how much uh, when you paint, it's relative to what else is on your paper. Like that blue at first, seemed like a decent blue. And then the darker we went, all of a sudden, that blue now looks almost just white. <laughs> so, it's always kind of crazy. This is giving me all those fun, snowy, snowy nights vibes. I um, grew up where it snowed and I just loved the snow at night. It was so peaceful. You're hoping and hoping and checking that it's snowing a lot so you have a snow day which we actually had quite a few snow days which was always cool every year they build in like five days into the the school year to have snow days and so this is making me think of looking out the window and seeing are we gonna have a snow day okay we'll let that final layer dry See how it looks. All right, I'm finished off that final layer. Now, there's one thing you could add to this that, again, because right now it's technically not snowing, it just looks like it has snowed in this scene. So you've got an option to add some snow to this. There's a few different ways you could do it. Um, one is if you have like a white gel pen, you could go on and, and dot a bunch of snow. This is, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Art and Flies gel pen. I've used this because it's going to be like so much dotting. I'm not going to do this way only because I am not a patient person. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw some white gouache on my palette and I am going to do the splatter option instead because I want, uh, I want to do it quicker. And so I am just adding some water to this white gouache. The reason too with splattering, I love doing it, but sometimes I get carried away. It's hard. So I'm going to do a test splatter off to the side, um, just to get some of the big chunks off. I still got some big chunks on there. I'm probably just going to do one splatter like this. I'm not going to even dip my paintbrush again because that's going to probably be enough. Splattering, I tend to overdo it. Right now I'm just doing like these tiny little flicks that are left on my brush. But there's actually a decent amount still flicking. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that looks really cool. Looks like a fun uh, now blizzard out by adding that snow on top. Yeah, that was really cool. Um, uh, I really wanna add a little bit more, but I also am like, it's probably good. Maybe just a touch. Okay, I'm gonna call it good. Maybe I'll do just a little right here. It's harder to see it in the front because um, our value is so much lighter. It's so much closer to white. So it's a little bit harder to see that in the front. Um, all right, let's pull off the tape on this. I went and trimmed up my painting so it looks all nice with the little white border. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I appreciate you following along, commenting, liking, subscribing, all those good things. So thank you for being here and I'll see you guys on the next one.